First and foremost, I want to acknowledge the heads of state that helped to headline this event. Today, uh, the President of the Republic of T Tunisia, His Excellency uh, President Saeed. Also, uh, the Prime Minister of Japan, the Prime Minister Kishida, and I wish him well uh, to recover from the COVID-19 situation. Uh, His Excellency President Macky Sall, President of Senegal and Chair of the African Union. Honorable Ministers, it's good to see you. Uh, Honorable Minister uh, Makatani, and thank you very much for your speech this morning and your support for Africa. Honorable Ministers across Africa, Mr. Sasaki, Chairman and CEO of JETRO, eminent business leaders from Japan and Africa, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I wish to congratulate the Government of Japan and the Government of Tunisia on this 8th Tokyo International Conference on, international, on African Development. I wish to first and foremost commiserate with the government of Japan on the very sad event of the assassination of Africa's, one of Africa's best friends, the former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. He was a great friend of Africa, and he was a man that I loved very much. And under his leadership, TICAD became such a strong platform for forging strong strategic partnerships between Japan and Africa. Shinzo Abe pushed for what he called a free and open Indo-Pacific. Please permit me, if we may rise and play one minute silence in honor of late Shinzo Abe. May soul rest in peace. Please be seated. Japan is a friend of Africa. Over the past seven years, TICAD has been an excellent platform to discuss on how to bolster Africa's economic development and to build stronger partnerships between Japan and Africa. Holding this summit in Tunis further shows that Japan values partnership on the ground right here in Africa. While official development assistance by Japan has clearly helped a lot in Africa, the move towards more private sector and investment approach offered lots of opportunities. In this regard, there's lots to be done. Two areas are especially important. First is bilateral trade. Of the $1.5 trillion in global trade by Japan, Bilateral trade with Africa was only $23.5 billion, or just 1.5%. The Africa Continental Free Trade Area now offers a much wider set of opportunities to change this. Second is on investments. Foreign direct investments globally by Japan is valued at $2 trillion, of which the total FDI stock in Africa accounts for just 0.03%. Japan's investment stocks in Sub-Saharan Africa reached a peak of $12 billion in 2013. However, this declined to $6 billion in 2021. These trends must be reversed, and it certainly can be. Some Japanese companies, such as Toyota, Shusho, are showing the way. Its investments in Africa generated $8.5 billion in revenues in March of 2022, and it was great listening to that from Mr. Karube. Thank you very much for your work in Africa. Komatsu, and I was sitting with both of them actually on the same table, which has business operations in 54 African countries, generated revenue of $1 billion. And thank you very much, Mr. Ohashi, for actually sharing that experience and encouragement with us. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the African Development Bank is working with Japan on expanding private sector investment opportunities in Africa. Our partnership with the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, on the Enhanced Private Sector Assistance for Africa, EPSA, has helped to deliver over $10 billion in financing that supports Africa's private sector. 
African Development Bank's partnership with Japanese Bank for International Cooperation, JBIC, Misuho Bank, and nine other financial institutions provided $2.7 billion to help to build the Nakala Corridor Railway and Port Project in Mozambique. Together with Total and other investors and JBIC, we also co-financed $24 billion liquefied natural gas project for Mozambique, making it the third largest exporter of liquefied natural gas globally, with Japan accounting for 30% of its market uptake. There are several reasons for Japanese companies and business leaders to focus on Africa. Africa is home to a vibrant fit fintech ecosystem that is leading the continent's digital revolution with the highest potential for leapfrog in the world. The continent has today 576 fintech startups, and they are run by young people, very dynamic and very entrepreneurial. Last year, African fintech companies raised almost $1.5 billion. And I was particularly excited listening uh, this afternoon to several Japanese business MOUs that were signed to promote greater investment in the businesses run by young people in Africa. Africa is primed to be the alternative source of supply of natural gas to help to secure energy supplies for Europe, for Japan itself, and the rest of the world. From Nigeria to Ghana, Tanzania, Senegal, Algeria, Kenya, Africa now has some of the largest reserves of natural gas in the world. The future of electric vehicles will depend on the availability of lithium iron. Africa has some of the largest lithium deposits in the world, from Democratic Republic of Congo to Namibia, Zimbabwe, and Mali, enough to make Africa competitive with China and Chile in the race for supplying global value chains for electric cars. Japan can play a huge role in investments in this area, especially given the leadership of Mitsubishi Corporation on lithium iron for mobility and power generation. Africa, ladies and gentlemen, also holds huge opportunities in agriculture, with 65% of the uncultivated arable land left to feed the world, not been in Asia, not been in Latin America, not been in Europe or in America, but right here in Africa. And so what Africa does with agriculture will determine the future of food in the world. And the size of that sector of food and ag is going to be worth $1 trillion, a whopping $1 trillion by 2030. Renewable energy investment opportunities are immense, including solar, hydro, wind, and geothermal. The investment by Japanese companies in geothermal energy plants in Kenya called Olkaria is a very good example of what Japan can do on renewable energy in Africa. From Democratic Republic of Congo, Morocco, Namibia, Botswana, huge opportunities exist for green hydrogen, the fuel of the future. The African Development Bank today is mobilizing $20 billion for developing what we call desert of power in the Sahel, which will power the economies of 11 countries with solar and become the world's largest solar zone. I would like to use this opportunity to call for a renewal of the Japan-Africa Energy Partnership, signed on July 3, 2017, between the African Development Bank and the government of Japan, this time with a focus on renewable energy and gas. Japanese investors should be more excited about Africa. The evidence speaks for itself, but let me amplify some of the key facts. The number of private equity funds in Africa grew from only 12 in 1997 to 150 by 2020. Africa is safe and profitable as an investment destination. In a 2020 survey conducted by the African Private Equity and Venture Capital Association, about 45% of the limited partners expect returns in Africa to outperform those of emerging markets and developed markets over the next 10 years. And 60% of 
of the limited partners plan to increase allocations to Africa in the next three years. TCAD, therefore, can help in a long way in tilting more Japanese private sector investments into Africa. It is time, I believe, for Japan to refresh, to re-engage, and to reinvest in Africa. But as you do, let me say it's important to base your investment decisions on Africa on facts, not on perceptions. Perception is not reality. I am excited that the Japan-Africa Business Forum, organized jointly with the African Development Bank, attracted over 3,800 participants. I am excited about opportunities to work together with Keiza Duyukai on Africa's investment fund that they put together to support Japanese business interests and investments in Africa. And thank you very much, Mr. Amutsu Iwai. I am excited about opportunities to work together with Kaidan Ren on improving business investment environments for attracting more private investments from Japan into Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, Toyota Shusho moved to Africa. It is prospering. Komatsu moved to Africa. It is prospering. Mitsubishi Heavy Industries moved to Africa. It is prospering. Several other Japanese businesses are prospering in Africa. And I fully expect that the Business Venture Memorandum of Understanding signed today between several businesses from Japan and private equity funds for Africa will equally prosper. Together, let's scale up Japanese private sector investments in Africa. Let us turn conversations into commitments. Let us turn commitments into investments. Let us work together. Ishoni Gambari Marshall. Let us prosper together. Domo arigato. Thank you very much.